This is Beverly High School, a place with over 120 years of football, a place with three state titles, a place where you grab the lunch pail and go to work. place where the favorite son has returned. In Andrew Morenci's first season at the helm, he led Beverly football to a 9-3 record in a Division II North Championship. During our conversation, we discussed his transition from Hamilton Wenham, how it helped him last season, and what fans can look forward to this year. I know your mother, Emily Morenci, yes. the first woman in Duck and Beverly Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah. Now, who would win one-on-one? -on -one? I gotta know that. <laughs> oh, well, you know what, my mom, I, I'm gonna say this right now, she was a great shooter. Yeah. So um, when we were in basketball, I was, I was a defensive player. Yeah. And um, we would warm up and she would come out and we would play her in, in 21 and one-on-one. -on -one. Not one-on-one, -on -one, 21 or something. Yeah free throw shooting and I would lose so she would beat me and I would it would, did wonders for my confidence yeah. going into a game as a senior being like yeah my mom beat me in basketball I'm gonna go play now so you know I'm sure my mom would take yeah. me still. Now thing I heard of this story where you hurt your arm but you didn't want to is this does this ring a bell you hurt your arm I believe it was at Stoneham yeah, you were Stoneham. playing basketball no, playing football playing football and you just didn't want to come out and yeah, I did I well I tried I broke my arm yeah. it was broken half and I was standing on the sideline and I you know I mean I wasn't going by I didn't want to go back in yeah so I waited yeah. you know and I didn't tell the coach and the coaches came over and they took so yeah. there's a little bit of truth oh, in that okay. yeah but yeah so I was done that was my career and I did not go back in okay. so. so what were your goals coming in to Beverly High School last season I know your first year as a head coach at Beverly what were the goals really to get yourself started here well I think that you know you as a head coach going into any new situation you know you always have that little bit of um, nervousness you know not knowing exactly what how it's going to go and so goal my goals last year really would become acclimated to to the setting at Beverly High School again have the players and the program and the parents and ministry just get used to who I am mm -hmm. and certainly all the while doing that be successful yeah. um, you know the team success each and every year is, is probably the primary goal but yeah. Yeah, last year was definitely a little different being my first year and coming back so you know for me personally I definitely had some kind of goals that I internally kind of used to drive me but certainly as a program we wanted to maintain what had been established in prior years and you know continue to be successful have the kids feel like that um, because there's a new regime it doesn't mean that it's going to change how successful they've been what do you miss most about Hamilton Wenham because you had a lot of success oh, there and, you know, yeah you know? no I think the kids my players and my coaches and so you know uh, my players just like football loyalty they still reach out uh, nothing makes me feel better when I get a text or call from a former Hamilton Wenham player yeah. that I coached a long time ago wishing me luck mm -hmm. when I got the job last year Beverly some of them reached out um, and that's those are the things I loved you know I I miss those guys there's a lot of um, really great people that I met in Hamilton Wenham um, at all levels so that I will take with me you know wherever I go you reached the Super Bowl there too yeah it was yeah how was how was that experience amazing I mean we were undefeated we were the first playoff win for them in their history we went to Super Bowl and we lost by two points mm -hmm. you know we should have you know Trevor Lyons got hurt at before halftime and we were winning so even though it was bittersweet, yeah. I look back now, and, and for you know Hamilton has outstanding athletes, but it's it's a different it's a different um, makeup, you know. When you have, you know, their basketball program's huge, like here, but you know they're winning state titles there, and soccer they're huge, and football's been good, yeah. but they've never been to the to that level, yeah. you know. And now that I I was able to say we were able to get there, we were able to get to the dance mm -hmm. in Hamilton, uh, while well, that experience I'll cherish forever. Now. You mentioned tr the transition and success at Hamilton won them two coach of the years, two conference titles there. Was the transition difficult or was it easier just because you're familiar with the place? It was slightly easier, I would have to say, because of the Beverly factor. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people who have been a part of Beverly football for so long that I was able to cut, touch base with them initially to help me adjust a little bit to the things that were going on here. So that definitely helped um, having a little bit of a history with the, with the school. Um, and certainly once I got my feet wet, 
it all goes back to just football, goes yeah. back to coaching, goes back to kids, and you know something that you're familiar with. Now, who are the players that sort of surprised you? Obviously, you might have known, because I saw in an interview, you were paying attention to what was happening here at Beverly, so you right. might have known some of the players, but who really stood out last year? Yeah, yeah you know, I, I, I have to say, going into last year, there were a lot of, it was a little bit of the unexpected, because we had lost our two top rushers mm -hmm. from Coach Bowers last year. Yeah. We had lost three of our best linemen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there were these major gaps, but it was ironic, but you had a lot of the strong senior class yeah. with a lot of skill guys who actually have gotten a little bit of a taste of it. So, yeah. even though you had guys back, they hadn't really kind of, you know, threw a lot. For example, we hadn't thrown a exactly. lot of passes, and there was a lot that hadn't been done. So it was like 50-50. I, I felt like there was a, enough uh, pieces back where we could be viable. But the same token, I knew that this was going to be a major adjustment for the players who were coming back. I mean, it was a different offense, yeah. different, like you said, different coaches. So um, I, it, I was very surprised at the seniors, um, how they adjusted. Okay. Um, you know, Kevin Morency threw for over 1,100 yards. Mm -hmm. You know, Sam Abadie was a Boston Globe All Scholastic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these are guys who the year before had done things, but they didn't. They just didn't do it to that level. So there was there was a bunch of those guys. You know, Shenards, and you know, I, I could go on and on. And you know, and and, and, Ed, and Hugh Calis. Yeah. You know, th those are the guys who really kind of um, it, the change in uh, leadership didn't matter to yeah. them, and they were able to get it done. You mentioned Kevin Morency, your nephew. How was that? Not only coaching your nephew, but coaching him at a position that you play. That's right. You know, it was very unique. I, we looked at it as um, just a bonus, um, another kind of icing on the cake. Yeah. To, not only he's a senior quarterback, he gets to lead a new offense that's going to throw. Mm -hmm. But again, he has the fami familiarity with my, being my nephew. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of knows how um, I view things and so mm -hmm. forth. So we had that commonality and issue that helped a lot. I mean, um, I, it was very much a memorable experience on top of everything else because the fact he was my nephew. I mean, Kevin never asked for anything special in particular, but um, he, he played as hard as anybody who was smart. So it made me easy. I didn't have to deal with any problems as far as the ne nephew uncle thing because he was just so dedicated. He was a hard worker. He just made it, that was a great thing. I was lucky in that sense. Another senior, you mentioned Hugh Calise. Yeah. Losing him is huge. Going to Merrimack now, I saw an interview you, done, yeah. or you did with, I believe, the Salem News about that. Mm -hmm. you just talk about him, not just as a football player, but as a person, because he didn't play sports until ninth grade. Amazing story. I mean, he was somebody who, um, you know, I feel grateful that I got the an experience of coaching him for the short amount of time I did. He is somebody that exemplifies leadership and student athletes and uh, what a, uh, maybe a successful football player, both on the field and off, should be. Um, Hugh is humble as anybody you're ever going to meet. I mean, these are all attributes he's oozing with. So again, for me, I had a guy like that waiting, you know, as a captain, as a leader. It helped to make that adjustment all the easier. And, you know, he's one of those special players. I mean, you coach them over the years who you know are going to go on to do great things. Um, and Hugh was definitely one of them. The road to Gillette featured juggernaut after juggernaut. Down went Somerville, and the titan that was Tewksbury followed suit. Next up was the D2 North Final against Bill Ricca in their house. At halftime, the Panthers looked up at the scoreboard as it read 18-0 Bill Ricca. The Ricky game down 18 nothing at halftime. What was your message to those kids in that locker room? <laughs> you know, I would like to think that somehow directly what I what I what was said was directly as a result, but um, it doesn't really work that way in football as a coach. You have to say true to your ideals and you know, one play at a time. If I could say anything, the mantra was one play at a time. We were looking to focus on the next play and, and win that next series and really shorten the um, kind of the expectation for, for the moments of each and every moment that second half. Just try to make it something where we could turn the tide, and we and we did. It was it, it was a special game. It was a very special I mean, it's something that I've never experienced in my years. It was reminiscent to that first Super Bowl that Dan Bauer won against Somerset. I believe they were down 20 nothing at halftime. Well, they were down 14 nothing. Yeah, I remember that game as well. No, Bill Ricca, and especially the way they were coming in, they had beaten Everett. You know, they were considered one of the best teams in the state. Um, so it was a great experience. Unbelievable. Now that next game, Duxbury, completely different story. What sort of happened there? Well, you know, I think that there's a lot of things with Duxbury. You know, it, the kids, you know, it's frustrating as a coach 
knowing that you know after Bill Ricker, some teams were moving on. Yeah. So like Marblehead, for example, they won that Bill Ricker week, and they were in Foxborough. And yeah. you know, we were the unlucky lot that actually had to pay the extra game. And then it's Duxbury, who some people say was the best team in the state. Yeah. And you know, these are the things you can't control. So you know, we were lucky, happy to be there. Um, and they came out, and you know, it's funny. We gambled a little bit early. We made a couple early mistakes. They made us pay for it. And then inevitably, it became like a, a, a just a just a wave, yeah. a tidal wave of um, play after play. Um, I will say this: in the second half, we played better. We settled down. Um, I think we ran out of gas. Yeah, you know, it's funny when you we played Tootsbury and undefeated number one seed. We played Bill Ruckett in Duxbury within two and a half weeks. Exactly. That's you the, know, and <laughs> so you know you got to that last part. Um, and not to make excuses, Duxbury was great, but I do think that. Uh, we could have played better, and, and then we, you know, unfortunately had to pay. The, you know, that's kind of the, the lessons of football. Yeah. Um, so now you mentioned in being in that unlucky lot, playing the extra game. The playoff system has been around now for a little bit. How do you feel about that? Do you like the old system better, or do you feel like this fits a little mm, more? I, I think that um, the what has happened is what was predicted. Yeah. Um, you leagues have taken a hit. So right now, you know, the old Northeast Conference is broken up into fragments. Exactly. You know, we're in a league right now with five or six teams. It's not even a league. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's taking the Thanksgiving Day games. Um, well, you know, it's funny. They, they'll, they matter around here, but yeah. take last year. You know, after playing Tewsbury, Bill Ricker, and Duxbury, mm -hmm. we then had three days to get ready for Salem. Yeah. So your success made it harder to deal with Thanksgiving. These are all the things that people who were opponents of this playoff system predicted. They said it's going to hurt leagues and it's going to hurt Thanksgiving. That's what's happened. Now, on the other hand, to the excitement of last year with two, three, and the record wouldn't have happened unless you had a playoff system. So the pluses and minuses, I know they're trying to tweak it. They've moved conferences again this year. I mean, I have mixed feelings on it, to be honest. So, so now this season, moving on. Someone asked me why should I be excited about the Beverly High School Football Panthers. What would you say? Well, I think that we have a, the program is feeling pretty good right now. You know, after last year's success and success in prior years, once again, you have a large group of seniors who are looking to do great things. We have guys back in, you know, in football they say, you know, in the offensive line, defensive line is where the games are won and lost. And this year, unlike last year, we have the most coming back in the line. So that's going to help. I mean, we have a lot of key guys to, to replace, the Hugh yeah. and Kevin Marenzi's. But um, we feel pretty good about this program right now. We, I feel pretty good about the kids coming back. Mm -hmm. And I feel pretty good about the senior class. Everybody's been working hard, and the kids mean business, so it should be interesting. Yeah, the, the two guys I interviewed today, they said everybody's working hard in the gym, and they mentioned that's a little bit different this year. They're working a little bit harder in the off season. What do you see the most different about this team? Well, than I, last I definitely see, you know, last year we had so much transition yeah. with a new staff and new, new faces, and this year the kids have been great lifting. As a matter of fact, they, it's, you know, I've been doing this a long time. This is one of the, you know, as far as off-season activity, this is definitely one of the best I've seen. Kids have been working, you know, our weight room has been packed, um, and that's been every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and morning workouts, we've been okay. Iron Village, you know, um, in Beverly, we've had kids volunteering to go there. So we have a lot of kids who are hungry. So is Andrew Morenci going to be the next head coach to bring a title to Beverly High School? <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> you know, it's funny, the... Uh, the, 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 the dream, you know, with the change, like we said, in the system, yeah. the league conference title is important, yeah. but it's about, you know, winning the, the title to get to the dance. And that's kind of, you know, that Division Two North title. That's kind of the, what we experienced last year. So, you know, for us, um, you know, we have goals. You know, you know, we haven't beat Marblehead in a while. We haven't beat, you know, we NEC title, we do. Um, and of course, the ultimate goal going to Foxborough, those are all well and good. But for us to be successful, you know, we're, we're a day to day team. We're just worried about Lynn English that we've yeah. won, you know, and that's kind of who we are. But, you know, for me as a football coach, you expect to, to be in title contention. That's your expectation. So I'm certainly hoping. What are some players that are going to surprise us this year, do you think? I think, you know, you get the Clark Marshans, you get the, you know, Ryan Barris stepping up, you have the Bobby Adams, you have, you know, the. Um, Paulo Feisch is certainly, Amir is somebody who's, who's going to have a, a, a great year for us. Yeah. Um, but you also have Billy Shaw, you know, kids like that. Um, 
you know, you have Tyler Gary's who are, who are hungry for their chance. Cl Clayton McAlpine, two-way starter we have yeah. coming back next year. Um, you have a lot of guys who have something to prove, but you have, you have a little bit of experience coming back at the same time. You know, we're lucky to have great captains. You know, Nick Gonzalez, Nick Berry, and Clark Marchand, great leaders. All of them want to be a part of something special. Now, what was the biggest takeaway from last year? What did you learn out of your first year at Beverly High School? I just think that, you know, um, football's football no matter where you go. You know, it just kind of reminded me of that. Um, kids are kids no matter where you go. You know, you, if you do the right things as a coach, you know, like the kids are going to respond no matter what city you're, in at, you're at. What was your best memory wearing orange and black in high school? I got to tell you, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot from when I played and I, even as an assistant coach, but I, I'm going to say this, you know, this Bill Ricca game. Really? Yeah, I mean, it was that, I mean, it was not, I, you know, the, the, all the kind of the context leading in, the way the game happened, I've never seen anything like it. It was, it was amazing. So you're a three-sport captain in high school, in the Hall of Fame, Beverly Sports Hall of Fame. For you, how important was it to get this job? Oh, it was huge. I mean, it's, it was one of those instances where, you know, when it's kind of a dream job and, yeah. and you think about something as a kid, it doesn't mean that as a kid you think about something and it, it, it ever happens. Yeah. But, you know, you, sometimes it does, yeah. you know. We, this is what I want to be when I grow up. And I was, a, you know, I worked at Beverly. You know, it's funny, I was uh, briefly, I, before I played youth football in Beverly, I was a ball boy um, here. And, you know, to be a ball boy at one point yeah. and then going to be head coach is pretty cool. But there's a, somewhere there's a side-by-side -side meme picture of that little yeah. ball boy picture. <laughs> you go well, look. Funny, I, when I look at my first experiences as a football player, um, it was, you know, at Bolts Playground. Yeah. You know, it was at Cooney Fields. Um, and then, of course, it hurt. I mean, to be able to come back full circle and just kind of be here, it's amazing. The best part of your story is when it changes, but doesn't change you. Morenci is continuing to build his legacy at the school that started it all. And it is clear that his values haven't changed, even though his story continues to grow.